So uh, basically, um, you know, we want you to be able to get along with your classmates, with your instructors, with your peers in the clinical areas, that sort of thing. So one of the very first things that you have to think about um, with that is professional etiquette. Okay? Do you know what professional etiquette is? Is it just manners? Having good manners? It is having good manners, but it's a little bit more than that. Okay? Um, it's, it's also your appearance. Does, does how you look matter in a professional environment? <clears throat> so, you know, when, when you act professional, you build better relationships. Okay? If you act professional and you look professional, people are going to want to build a relationship with you. Um, if you don't act professional and you don't look professional, people are going to tend to kind of shun you. Okay? So professionalism is, is terribly important um, in the nursing profession. Just a few things um, to help you exercise on good professional etiquette. Um, first of all, introduce yourself. When you walk into, your, into the room or into the clinical facility especially, you know, don't just kind of sneak in and sit down, you know, think maybe nobody will realize I'm here. Um, you know, walk in with confidence. Walk in there and say, good morning. You know, my name is Charlotte Holland. I'm from Richmond Community College, and I'm in the RN program, and I'm assigned to the unit today. What can I do to help? Um, people are going to be much more receptive um, to providing you with educational opportunities if you go in there with a good attitude and with professionalism. Okay? Keep your conversations on track. Okay? You know, we know that you have personal issues. We all have personal issues. But the clinical area is not the place to bring them. Okay? Especially um, to the patient. Okay? You're the caretaker. The patient doesn't need to know about your personal problems. Okay, so keep your personal um, issues and even your personal information um, to yourself. They need to know your name, but other than that, they don't need to know about your personal information. Safe topics to talk about, the weather, um, traffic, um, a good book you read, a TV show, um, whatever, um, but keep the personal issues um, to the minimum. What's your body language? Um, you know, if you're in a patient's room and you've got your hand, your hand on the doorknob and you've got your back to them, anything you need? You need me to get you anything? <laughs> you know, you're kind of telling them, you know, I'm asking you if you want anything, but I'm out the door. Okay? Um, so, so what's your body language? Um, you know, don't cross your arms if you're standing up here. If I'm standing up here talking to you more like this. You know, don't look like I really want to be here. <laughs> so, so what's your body language? Um, Cultivate a positive work environment. That is so important. Um, you know, be polite, be courteous, use lots of please and thank yous, um, that type of thing. Uh, when you have respect for others, they're going to respect you. Okay? But if you don't respect people that you work with, you cannot expect them to respect you. Offer to help. Um, you know, a lot of times you're only assigned one patient or maybe two patients. Um, and you'll get your, your uh, stuff done, all your care done, all your medications administered, treatments done. Um, there's always something to do in a medical facility. Um, so offer to help someone else. You may make their day. Um, and they may remember that because they may be the one that you go to looking for a job. Um, so make sure that um, you offer to help others. Um, dress for success. Can't tell you how important appearance is, okay? Um, you know, people do judge you, whether it's right or not, they judge you by the way you look, okay? If you're dressed, and I'm not talking about whether you're pretty or not so pretty or have pretty hair or bald or whatever, I'm talking about the way you look. Is your, is your uniform clean? Is your uniform neat? Is your uniform ironed? Is your hair neat? Is it pulled up? Um, and that sort of thing. <clears throat> okay? So, present a positive and professional image. Would you be comfortable with being, being your healthcare provider? He came in and said, um, Ms. Smith, I'm going to be doing your open heart surgery today. Just wanted to stop by and say hello, and we'll see you in the operating room. I'm looking for a back door. I don't know about y'all, but I'm not sure that I'm going to be doing open heart surgery. What about him? It's the difference. It's the dress, exactly. His appearance. It's only, and I'm not 
saying when I showed this to my daughter, she's like, Mom, don't you think people might be offended because she has a little tattoo on her shoulder, so she's a little tattoo sensitive. And I said, um, I said, I don't have anything at all against tattoos, but it's not a professional, you know, show them in a professional environment, okay? And so once they're covered, once he looks the part, then you're more likely to trust him as a professional. <laughs> All right, so let's move on then to some more specific things. Looking at classroom behavior. One of the biggest things that we need to think about in the classroom is being respectful. Okay? Be respectful to the classmates, be respectful to your instructor, be respectful to the proctor. Okay? Um, you should address ARNET and clinical um, faculty and personnel. Um, with their title and their last name, unless you're asked to do otherwise, okay? Now, some people say it's fine to call me Miss Charlotte or Miss Crystal or whatever, um, but unless they tell you that, you're to say Miss Holland, Miss um, Davidson, or whatever um, their title and name is, you're to call them by that unless asked to do otherwise. And as I said a while ago, just thank you and please frequently. Um, it'll, it'll get you all the place. You're expected to remain in the classroom when the lecture is going on. There should not be people getting up and walking out of the classroom, in and out of the classroom during the lecture. We give you lots of breaks. There's a break just about every hour. So you're usually only in the classroom about an hour before you get a break. Um, and you'll get 15 minute breaks and then also an hour for your dinner break. Okay? So there's plenty of time for you to go potty and, and go get something to eat and all that good stuff on the breaks. So you should have no reason to get up and leave the classroom um, while someone's lecture. That's just disrespectful for someone to be talking and you get up and walk out. Okay? So remain in the classroom at all times when lectures want. Unless, I mean, I know sometimes you, you know, go to dinner and you come back and it just didn't set right. <laughs> you know, so occasionally it's going to be like, okay, i got to go or i got to go. <laughs> well, you know, obviously, get up and go. Um, but as a routine, you should not be leaving the classroom for anything. Um, if you do leave, if you leave before the instructor gets through lecturing, uh, before, the lecture, before the instructor dismisses you, the instructor will tell you um, at the end of lecture, you know, she'll ask about questions, she'll take questions, um, and then she'll say, okay, we're done, you know, have a good night, whatever. But expect to be there on Tuesday and Thursday evenings until 8.30. Okay? Classes from 3.30 until 8.30. Expect to be there until 8.30. Don't start getting antsy at 7.45, 8 o'clock, thinking, oh, man, we'll get early tonight. And expect to be there until 8.30. Okay? Um, and like I said, if you do leave before lecture is finished, time will be counted off. So, you know, if you leave, um, it'll be just like a tardy if it's less than an hour. And a tardy, any time, if you come in five minutes late, ten minutes late, um, it's a tardy and you're counted for an hour of absence. Okay, so it'll be the same thing. If you leave ten minutes early, you'll be counted an hour of absence. Okay? Um, cell phones must be turned off in the classroom. Um, we, it is a technology-based program, as we talked about. Um, and it does mess up um, the, the system. You can actually hear, even if you have it on vibrate, um, it, something about the electronics, it will cause a clicking sound over the, the interactive video if your cell phone uh, vibrates. So please make sure your cell phones are turned off. Absolutely no cell phones um, and no texting or loud during class. Okay. One big thing I want to bring up is the proctor. The proctors will be different on every campus. Some of them use work-study students. Um, some of them use students that are in the LPN program. Um, on my campus, we actually have a radiology technician <coughs> that is um, our proctor. Um, so you'll have all different. Some of them use uh, instructors as proctors. So it'll be all different people. Um, but they have the authority. They have the responsibility to maintain classroom policies. Okay. And so they have the authority to tell you, put your cell phone away. And the policy at my school, and your program chair will tell you at your school, the policy at my school is I tell my proctor, you ask them nicely one time. Put your cell phone away, be quiet, whatever. The second time, 
and ask them politely, you tell them politely to leave for the night, and the young does. Okay? Um, it's just disrespectful to the other students and to the lecturer. So make sure um, that you respect the proctor. Make sure that whatever the proctor says, um, that you listen to, and your proctor, believe me, has a direct line to your program chair, and she will be uh, reporting to her. All right, the next thing, hello, there we go, is be on time. Okay, we talked already a little bit about um, if you're late, um, you will be considered tardy. If you are not in your chair, ready for lecture at 3.30, okay, or ready for that test at 3.30. Or if it's a break, you can come back from the break. And you'll have a schedule that tells you exactly what time you need to be back from the break. Um, you know, I had a student the other day. She said, well, why don't you mark me tardy? And I said, well, because you weren't in the classroom when, when the lecture started, when, when it was time. Well, I was here. I was just in the bathroom. Well, yes, but you were in the classroom um, and ready to start class. You know, she, she got there and put her stuff down before 3.30, but she then she went to the bathroom. All right, so um, let's see, where did I forget that? Three or more events of tardiness per semester will be considered excessive tardiness, and you will be placed on probation uh, for that. And your program chairs will be talking to you a little bit more about probation and, and what that means. But just be aware of that, that if you're tardy three times um, or more, you will be placed on probation. Okay? Um, and we already talked about the 10 minutes, um, 10 minutes or later for an exam. Um, and you'll be taking 10 percent, we'll be taking off of your exam. All right. Appropriate dress. What's the three B's? Boobs, button, belly. Boobs, button, belly. We don't want to see any of the three. We know you've got them. We all do, but we don't want to see them. Okay? Um, so please dress. Um, dress comfortably, but dress appropriately. Okay, um, make sure your shorts, you know, in the summertime, this time of year, probably not wearing shorts, um, but in the summertime, make sure you're about mid thigh. Um, you know, no low cut blouses. We don't want to see your undergarments. We don't want to see through blouse where we can see your black bra. Um, so just dress appropriately. Um, okay, next is food and drink. And all I'm going to tell you about food and drink is that it's different on every campus. Okay, some, some campuses are in a uh, computer lab and they will allow you to have any food drinks. Others are in a classroom and they'll allow you to have food drinks. But one thing I will tell you about that is if you have, uh, if you are allowed food and drinks, um, be respectful as far as the noise level, okay? Um, crunching chips, um, digging in a chip bag, opening wrappers, popping water bottles, um, that sort of thing is very distracting. And if you're trying to listen and your neighbor's sitting here, you know, crunching chips or whatever, um, it's just disrespectful. Okay? Asking questions. Um, we do encourage you um, to ask questions, um, but we ask you to be polite about it. Okay? Uh, I know that you all probably have not yet experienced the interactive video, or some of you may. Uh, but your instructor will be there on the screen. But you'll have a microphone up front. And so anytime you have a question um, for the instructor, you need to go to the microphone. You need to identify yourself. Let them know who you are, what school you're from, and then let them know what your question is. Ask it very respectfully. Um, and once they answer your question, tell them thank you. Okay? Um, if it's not the answer that you wanted, don't argue. Say thank you, and if, if it's something you still don't understand, email them later. Don't take up a lot of class time with something that, that um, maybe you disagree with the instructor on. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I will tell you is we get a lot of is, well, that's not the way we do it at work. Well, you know, as you all know, if you've worked any amount of time at all, what the book says is ideal may not necessarily be what your program, what your facility policy is. Or maybe it's your facility policy also, but that's not exactly the way that it's done at your facility. 
So, um, you know, what we're going to be teaching you is out of the textbook, and it's the ideal way to do it. Okay? It may not be the way you do it at work, um, but it's, it's the, the way that the textbooks teach. Technical problems. Um, as Ms. Gillen said earlier, this is a technical based program. I can promise you there will be technical problems. Okay, I've only been doing this for two years, um, but we almost always um, have a technical problem sometime throughout the year. Now, it's not every night, you know, certainly, uh, but occasionally we're going to have technical problems. <coughs> Most of the time, everything's run smoothly, there's not any problems. You can talk to them, they can talk to you, you can see them, they're fine. But sometimes it doesn't work that way. If the weather's bad or, you know, you know how computers are, they just get a hair sometimes and all of a sudden they decide not to do what they're supposed to do. And so you have to learn to be patient. Um, and, you know, you have to really evaluate yourself and say, can I handle technological problems? Can I handle it if I have to sit there for 15 or 20 minutes or sometimes even an hour waiting for them to fix something on the computer, okay? As she said, you, you want to evaluate that and make sure this is the right program for you because it, it can be an issue sometimes with students and, and they get frustrated and they get mad and they get, you know, they want to leave and, um, you know, you just have to be patient because it's going to happen and we hope it doesn't happen very often and only it doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. Moving on then, looking at clinical behavior, okay, once again, be on time, okay, pretty important. Um, you are considered tardy if you're not at your pre-conference area, seated, ready to go um, at the time that you're supposed to begin your, your pre-conference. Um, the same thing applies as for the classroom, um, any tardiness will result in an hour of missed clinical time. Three or more events of tardiness per semester also will put you on probation for clinical. Um, you're allowed up to 18 hours of missed clinical time. Okay, so um, you've got basically a weekend that you can miss because cl clinical days are nine hours each, and so basically you can miss a weekend. All right. So you know the the issue that that I had a couple of years ago was that the student was tardy a couple of times, so she already had two hours. Of, of absence, and then she missed a weekend. So she was out of the program. So she missed over her eight hours. <laughs> over eight hours. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. You do have to make the clinicals up, but you still only have that 18 hours that you can miss. Okay. All right. Be prepared for clinical. Be well rested. Um, don't have stayed up all night the night before. Um, you need to arrange your work schedule so that you're not working the night before clinical. Um, so that you can come in and um, safely and effectively take care of patients. Um, come prepared. Make sure you have your assignments. Make sure you have um, your concept maps. You know, I, I like the way Ms. Crystal talked about no care plans. We don't have care plans, but we do have concept maps. And you'll find that concept maps are very similar to care plans. So don't, I mean, you can be excited about no care plans, but don't get too excited because you still get the opportunity to do concept maps, okay? Um, no cell phones um, in the clinical area. Um, not allowed to send or receive text messages, make or receive phone calls, um, you know, take care of personal business during clinical. You do not need your cell phone to be in clinical. Okay, whoops. I I'm just missing all of my own. Okay, there we go, be in uniform. Um, you need to arrive to clinical clean and neat. You know, don't show up to clinical, um, you know, dragging your uniform behind you, you know, thinking I'll run in the bathroom and change real quick. Okay, you show up at clinical in uniform, clean and neat. Um, your uniform should be non-wrinkled. Um, I know by now you probably know it should be navy top, navy, bo navy bottoms, and a white lab coat. Um, your shoes do need to be white. They need to be clean. Okay. Um, they do need to be either uniform athletic shoes. They cannot be open toe, open heel, um, any of that. Uh, mostly white in color. Um, your name badge must be worn and visible at all times. 
It can't be flipped around backwards where people can't see your name or picture or whatever. It can't be tucked in your shirt. It has to be visible. Okay. And then just some standard um, hygiene things. Use deodorant. Bathe. No loud perfumes, cologne, that sort of thing. Fingernails neat, clean, trimmed, no polish, um, no artificial nails. Um, cosmetics should be, um, you know, very minimum. Um, you know, for some of us, you don't want to be showing up with no makeup. Um, but you don't want to look like a clown either, okay? So don't be wearing a lot of makeup. Hair must be neat. Uh, no ornamental hair clips, bows. Especially you guys, we don't want y'all wearing any bows. No hats, caps, bandanas. Um, beards and mustaches should be neatly trimmed and short. Smokers, make sure you don't smell like smoke. Okay. Um, be careful about driving to clinical, especially some of you that have an hour or so to drive and you're sitting there smoking in the car and you're going to get to clinical and you're going to smell like a cigarette. Okay. I'm going to be sent home. Don't, don't show up to clinical smell like a cigarette smoke. And, and your breath smell like cigarette. As far as jewelry, you're only allowed um, to wear your watch um, and a wedding band that has no stone, um, nothing sticking up, nothing jagged. Um, other body jewelry is not allowed. No tongue studs, no eyebrow things, no bars, no metal in the face. Okay? <laughs> um, and then uh, tattoos cannot be visible. Okay? So any tattoo you have has got to be covered by band-aid or coban or something like that. Um, no logos, political buttons, ribbons, that sort of thing. Okay. Be respectful and helpful. I think we've kind of covered this pretty well, but it's so important in the clinical area to make sure that you're respectful to the people that you're working with um, and that you're helpful as well. Jump in there and learn something. Be assertive. As I said, don't just kind of, you know, slither in and sit down in the corner. Um, you know, be assertive. You know, ask, ask them, can I do this? Can I see this? Can I watch this? Um, and the more you want to do, the more they're going to let you do. Okay? And lastly, but certainly not least, be a critical thinker. Um, I know you probably heard about critical thinking all through your in school, um, but it's really important um, as RNs that you are critical thinkers. I like to think of it as clinical decision making. Okay? Um, it's not just facts. You know, we all can memorize facts. We can look at facts in a book. Um, but you have to be able to, to take all those facts, take this fact and this fact and this fact, and put them all together and make a decision about how to take care of this patient. And that's what um, critical thinking is. So, for instance, a fact would be that a normal white blood count is 5,000 to 10,000, right? We all know that, okay? But now, think about if you get a lab report back, and that lab report says, this patient's um, white blood count is 2,000, okay? Now you need to take that information. You've got to know that normal value to know that that's abnormal, right? And you know that that's low. And so what is a low white blood count? Mean? You've got to know that. Well, that means they're at risk for infection. So what do I need to do for a patient who's at risk for infection? So you've got to know that information. And then you've got to put all that together and say, okay, now I've got all these facts, I've got all this information, how do I need to proceed with care for this patient? Okay? Does that kind of explain critical thinking? All right. Thank you. All right. Questions? Anyone have any questions for me or Ms. Davidson? No, um, you will you will get your scrubs on your own. It just has to be navy top and navy bottom and a white lab jacket. But you purchase um, purchase them on your own. Dark navy. Yes. Now, y'all may want to wait until you meet with your clinical. I know uh, at our school, I think our clinical coordinator gives them some instruction. Okay. That, so okay. It, it could be different. So you might not want to wait until after Tuesday then to to do this. Yes. Um, do clinical go in groups or by ourselves? Um, it's different everywhere you go. Um, you know, some some will go, you know, like several at a time. I know in, in at my school we have um, some areas where there's eight um, in a hospital, but they're spread all over the hospital, maybe two in each unit. 
Um, but St. Thomas <coughs> might go to an obst obstetrician's office and we'll give you. Um, so it's different. Um, every school and every clinical side is different. Mm -hmm. They can be athletic shoes, yes. So they can be tennis shoes, they just need to be solid leather. They can't be on canvas or anything like a needle would go through like the brush. And again, once again, you might check with the clinical coordinator or the government chair to be sure they're specific. So the other ones are a little bit different. That's the little picky little soapboxes. Okay. Anything else? Thank <laughs> you.